Okay, good evening, everyone. We'll begin the meeting, and we'll do that with the secretary reading the meeting notice. Ms. Smith. The Board of Directors of the School District of the City of Erie and the Board of Directors of the City of Erie Regional Career and Technical School will meet in regular session on Wednesday, September 10th, 2014, in the auditorium at East High School, 1001 Atkins Street, at 6 o'clock p.m., by request of the President, John C. Harkins. Roll call. Ms. Shenley. Here. Mr. Spagel. Here. Mrs. Alexandrovich. Here. Mr. Brzezinski. He's unable to be with us this evening. He's excused. Thank you. Mr. Casillo. Same with Mr. Casillo. Unable to be at the meeting, and uh, he's excused. Thank you. Mr. Fabrizi. Here. Mrs. McNair. Here. Mr. Petrunger. Unable to be here this evening and excused. Thank you. Mr. Harkins. Here. You may also notice that our superintendent is not with us this evening, and filling in for him is our able assistant superintendent, Nancy Sedaly. The superintendent is in Harrisburg for a meeting of the State Board of Education. Tonight we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by Anne Marie Reiser, sixth grade student at Roosevelt Middle School, and she'll be introduced by Mr. Chris Pope, the assistant principal. Following the pledge, we'll have a moment of silence for two of our uh, former employees who passed away. Actually, just one, I'm sorry. John Drew, a retired East High School teacher uh, for many years, passed away on August 22nd, 2014. So, Mr. Popa. Thank you. On behalf of our entire school community, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a sixth grader, Anna Marie Reiser. Anna Marie is an outstanding student who loves social studies, science, and math. In her free time, she likes riding her bike and playing outside with her friends. According to Anna Marie, she loves being in middle school because she's treated like a bigger kid. Anna Marie is here tonight with her parents and grandparents to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Anne Marie, if you'd come over and shake hands with us, we'd be proud to do that. Mr. Spagel has a gift for you. for being here tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you, Anne Marie. And as we mentioned, uh, the passing of John Drew was uh, noteworthy. Uh, he was a longtime teacher at East High School and a coach. And Mr. Brzezinski wanted to make sure we stressed uh, that he particularly uh, was uh, respectful and fond of Mr. Drew. They had worked together. Mr. President. Mr. Spagel. If I could say as well to dovetail on Mr. Brzezinski's comments. Mr. Drew was one of my instructors when I was here at East a long time ago. Um, and he was set a great example for all of us. He certainly had the respect of all the students while we were here. And he was also a, uh, a ref for, for wrestling, and he was very well respected. I was, I didn't respect him, I feared him. So he was, he was a good man. I really, really liked that guy. Next, we have a video presentation. Uh, from GE Transportation for their work at, uh, and thank you to GE for their work at Central and Roosevelt Schools. Mr. Popa. Ladies and gentlemen, I share the podium with Pam Makowski, who's the principal of Central Tech. Over the past summer, the volunteers from General Electric came to Roosevelt and Central Tech to donate their time and talents to provide our building with some much needed attention. 
Thanks to GE, the bleachers in Central Tech were painted, as were many of our classrooms. The conference area behind our library looks greatly improved thanks to the new paint and carpet. Our faculty and staff would like to formally thank all the employees of General Electric for their continued support of our schools. I believe Mr. John McCauley, Mr. Tim Haschock, Mr. Charlie Deemer, Mr. John Young, and Ms. Kate Jacobson are with us this evening representing GE. At this time, we have a very brief video message from our students thanking all of you. I'm an instructional coach at Roosevelt Middle School and we would like to give a huge shout out and a thank you to everybody at GE for brightening up our school and making it sparkle with new paint and all the repairs that you've helped us do. The staff and the students were elated when they came in this year. What a difference. Also, thank you so much for the continued support that you do inside the school as well and helping us improve instruction. Thank you. Hi, my name is April Moore. I'm here at Central Tech. We would like to thank you from GE for painting our bleachers and fixing our gym. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Green from Roosevelt. I just want to thank GE for fixing up our classroom this summer. We really appreciate it. Thanks, GE. Thanks, GE. Waste your time. Here's why. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Central Tech, I'd like to thank all the employees of General Electric who took the time out of their busy schedules to fix up our building. Walking into our gym and seeing the bleachers painted made a huge impression on all of us. I know the students from both schools really appreciate the fresh coats of paint in our classroom. Your dedication and services to our community are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Bring me down. Bring me Thank you. And thank you. We appreciate Mr. President. it. Mr. Fabrizi? I just wanted to comment on the video. I think, I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very nicely done. I, whoever did the work did very well. And I certainly want to make sure that all the kids that participated, it's hard to get kids to participate in those kind of things. So those are all kids that stood up and did the right thing. And I, it was very enjoyable. We had two executive sessions since we last met. The first one was on September 3rd of this year in room one of the Dr. Barker Leadership Center, and it was from 6.40 p.m. to 7.27 p.m. on a legal matter. And tonight we met in the East High Library from 5.10 until 5.47 on personnel issues. Next, we have hearing of citizens and persons desiring to speak for five minutes must submit their request in writing to the secretary's office at least one week prior to the board meeting. All others may speak three minutes. Two citizens have requested and will be given five minutes of speaking time. The first is Mr. William McDonald speaking to the topic of the Erie School District business. Mr. McDonald.
Good evening, board. Mr. President, all you board members. I'm looking at your agenda here. I want to speak on something else, but when I got to looking at this, I don't understand nothing you got on here. Transfer small funds, funds 10 and 20. That, what's that explaining? That's not telling us nothing. We don't know where the money coming from and where it's going. Could be going into somebody's pocket for all I know. I think you could do a better job in explaining where it come from and where it's going. Maybe we'll understand it then, because I don't believe you all understand it. I wanted to uh, get on another subject here. Uh, do you have any uh, insurance on those kids that's playing sports? That's what I want to know. Because uh, a few people have come up to me and, you know, was asking me about it. I tell them I don't know nothing about it. They should come and talk to you about it. And, and, I, and I do want to know, do you have insurance on those kids that's playing sports? Do you have any insurance on them when they get hurt at school? If you Can could anybody answer that? If you could finish, this isn't a question and answer session. This is for hearing of citizens, but if you have any other questions when you finish, I'll refer the insurance question to the solicitor and have him respond. So if you have any other questions. Uh, oh, I'm uh, full of questions now. All right, I but as quite. I said to you, this is for hearing, not question and answer. We're not here to be uh, going back and forth with you. It's going to cut into your speaking time if you do. Well, that's okay. Uh, I want to get back to that school you sold up there on uh, Peach Street. That's, that's a beautiful school up there. You gave it away. You didn't sell it because I'm sure it's worth way more than you sold it for. I'm just hoping that that wasn't, wasn't one of those good old boy things you did a buddy a favor or something because it was quite a bit of taxpayers' money to even build that school. That school, it, it, it looks like it was just built yesterday. But you want to tear schools and close schools. And uh, I, I would like to know what was wrong with that school for you to get rid of it. There you got Roosevelt. You got, let's see, you got a couple more schools that you, you know, you could have sold at, uh, I think, uh, that uh, credit union or whatever they were. But uh, I think you made a bad deal there. You didn't get enough for the school. You, did, you really didn't. If you was going to sell it, you should have sold it for something. That school was worth probably, if you were going to sell it, you should have sold it for way more than what you got for it. And uh, at that time, you was deeply in debt. I don't quite understand. Now, you want to build schools. Why you want to close schools and build schools? Don't you have maintenance going around? I know that school on East Avenue over there. I see the drains falling off the front where you're going in the door there. Uh, don't you have nobody going around uh, repairing things, small things like that? I don't expect them to go and rebuild a school, but small things like that, you should have somebody going around taking care of it. And uh, that fence was tore down, I did. it wasn't tore all the way down, but don't you have maintenance going around taking care of these things? I mean, behind our money, did, you get good money from you, the taxpayers. I mean, we're struggling every time we turn around, you're gonna raise, you're raising, you're raising. Uh, I don't understand it. These people can't, they can't stand all them taxes keep going up. You should, you should cut, trim the fat somewhere, because uh, it's a lot of fat. Uh, sometime I go by those schools, and you know, and I see that some of them employees standing outside, they should be inside working. If they get, they're not doing their job, if the supervisor is not doing his job, then you should replace him. 
I want you to look at that a little bit closer. Because, hey, every time I turn around, I'm paying taxes. My tax is going up, and I got to pay them if I'm going to keep my property. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. We have a shrunken maintenance staff that does a pretty good job with keeping up with what they can do, and we're satisfied that they're doing a pretty good job. And uh, we closed three buildings, and we have those things, these conditions, because we can't afford to keep everything open and have additional staff. Mr. Solicitor, I'm not sure if you can quote the selling price, the money we realized for the sale of Glenwood, but would, if, if so, could you state that? And also, uh, the insurance question, are our athletes insured and are our students insured? I, I believe the, uh, the Glenwood sale price was over a uh, million dollars, I believe. Was it 1.2 or 1.4? I think it was 1.2 million. Uh, okay. on, and it was done with a public bid, sealed bids that uh, that uh, were submitted to the board secretary's office after after uh, three weeks of advertising, uh, and that was the that was the bid. It was a very highly competitive bid. I think there were three or four bidders. Every million helps. <clears throat> How about the? Uh... Now, in the, regarding the insurance question, I think Mr. Dolstra and our athletic director is here, but I do believe that all of our students are insured. They're, they're insured. Yes, I believe so. Well, well, I know a kid got hurt down there at Vincent. They was playing in the gym, and uh, it, they say they didn't have no insurance. Told him they had to go to his mama and get his get his mother's insurance. Now, what's what's that, all the that should be taken up with the building principal or a coach if the kid's in a, a specific sport. But the kids, when they sign up for a PIAA uh, eligibility, they have to have insurance. Insurance is provided. Well, I think that they should be insured. We do too. And especially the ones that are playing in the sports because we agree when you're on out that there playing problem. in the sports, you could get hurt. And those kids should be taken care of. We so, agree. Uh, Thank I you. want you to look into that a little bit deeper and see just where, where we're at there. Thank because you, Mr. The McDonald. kids are my, I'm concerned about what happened to the kids. We are too, Mr. McDonald. So Thank you. Me more. Thank you for your time. Our next speaker with five minutes of speaking time is Mr. Michael Anderson of Erie speaking concerns of the Erie Rise Leadership Academy Charter School. Mr. Anderson. Uh, good evening. Uh, peace be on all to you. Uh, actually, I, I was supposed to be the last two meetings and I wasn't able to make it because I, I can't be in two places at one time. And I really primarily wanted to talk about the, uh, the Metro Indoor Summer Basketball League, which uh, was Erie School District children who played basically on Tuesdays or Thursdays at Wayne Middle School. And I was just absolutely proud of them and their, and their conduct. You didn't hear no problems about at Wayne Middle School on a Tuesday or Thursday about any problems out of kids. So all the hype that was said, you know, before the summer that it's going to be the OK Corral and this is going to be one of the worst summers ever, the kids are this, the kids are that. We got to believe in our young people. And, you know, for me, it was just simply that, you know, just going by just a little bit of faith in them that, you know, they want to play basketball, they want to do things that are constructive. And so I said, well, hey, you know, the season's over. You know, I wanted to just come down here and, and give all of you a shirt today. Uh, this is what the shirts look like. And what I did was I took uh, some of our local inner city businesses and, and put them on the back of it. I didn't ask them for any money. I just asked them, I just put the names on them because some of them have been supporting me for years. I want to give back to them in that uh, type of way. Uh, you know, my whole thing is that, you know, we have to start someplace. And it's real easy to sit back and say things that would have, could have, or should may happen. But until you actually start doing things, you realize, hey, you know what? These young people are no different than when I was in school, maybe you were in school. They just want to have a good time. Put them in the proper environment, have it properly chaperoned, and guess what? You get the right results, you know? And as I tell a lot of people, hey, you know what? We have uh, uh, school district buildings that, which is taxpayer dollars right there. You know, we should utilize them. You know, we shouldn't be maybe so quick to dismiss one of you's Erie school district property. And all I can say is this, you know, your staff people have, are always accommodating. You know, I'm, I'm like this, you know, I'm, I'm in a lot of schools. Last week I was in Edison, I was at East, and I was at Wayne for different reasons. And all I saw was staff trying to meet the challenge of educating someone's child or trying to teach someone's child simply the right thing. And that's it, you know. I mean, there's a lot of challenges today. It's not 
easy at all. You have to make difficult decisions, and you're not going to make everybody, everybody happy. I understand that. I agree with that, you know. My whole thing is that every once in a while, you know, because I was trying to get down here the last meeting because we had the championships the next day, and I just, and I wanted you to see it because, man, we had a good time, you know. And, and my whole thing is that next year, God willing, will be our third year, and we're just going to keep trying to build and build and build. My thing about summertime, I think uh, indoor basketball is a natural place for basketball because now you don't have to worry about weather, and we know how eerie weather is, huh? Because we didn't have the best summer all, did we? Boy, I mean, I, this was a very cool summer. So my whole thing was just coming down here and just, um, uh, uh, just, just a little bit of gratitude because, you know, uh, I know for what you do at times, it can be a thankless job. That I do understand. But some things just come with the territory. When it comes to leadership, right, some things come with the territory. You have, you have to sometimes accept the good, the bad, and the ugly. The only thing that I'll say uh, in regards to the um, uh, Rise Leadership Academy uh, would be this, is that since the first time I've been here and up to now, what I've yet to hear is, is the current chief executive officer, Mr. Gregory Myers, is he still being paid above his pension? And that's my only concern, because that's taxpayer dollars. You know, if you are retired and you're collecting a pension and now you go back in capacity working within the educational system, you are just like everybody else. You should have to play by the same rules. And if that's the law, that's the law. And that's what my concern is. And then at the same time, if there is a board there, their job, their duty is to, is, is to, is to have a policy that is consistent like every other educational institution. And if, and if they're not saying, hey, as of right now, Mr. Myers is, uh, is a paid, co uh, uh, not custodian, a paid consultant, and, and not the CEO, then I can respect that. Then that means, hey, you've made some changes. But if he's still getting paid two salaries, basically, I would say two salaries, but a pension and a salary, right, then you know what? That's a grave concern. Because you know, if they expect uh, the taxpayer for the next five years to fund that school, um, and he's able to get two incomes like that, I don't agree with that. And that's all I'll say, peace. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you for all that you do for the kids, too. Are there any other citizens? Um, I'll, we'll wait till you. Thank you, sir. You know, guys, we're not used to that. That's OK. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. My pleasure. Sir. I can deliver it to Dr. Bell. I can get a t-shirt. Yes. No, I'm going to give you Small? Small? Yes. Oh, I'll give you the battery. I'll give you the battery. Michelle, I got you. Thank you so much. While Mr. Anderson is finishing up, uh, the next citizen can get in the on-deck circle. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Ms. Potts. Good evening. Mr. President, Gary City School Board. I'm sorry that you're not all here tonight. I have a lot to say. I'll try to say it in three minutes. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say was I would like to reiterate uh, for Mr. Drew. He was a wonderful, wonderful person, a wonderful friend, a marvelous teacher, and a great person that was always in favor of East High School. He truly wore the scarlet and gray. Uh, the next thing I wanted to, if Mr. McDonald, he had left, and I, being a parent and having kids in sports, when the kids come into the school and they are going to play a sport, papers come home to the parents and they have to sign a waiver saying that if the child is hurt, they will be responsible for the injury. I know my daughter got her thumb broke playing softball. 
and I believe I in incurred the expense for that. Uh, and in regards to Mr. Anders, oh, I left a paper for everybody to read over. Uh, it is going to the newspaper for the letter to the editor, and you know how they cut and slice and chip away. I wanted you to see the true meaning behind the letter. It won't be the first and it won't be the last. Uh, oh, it is the first and won't be the last, I'm sorry. I think I wanted to ask one other question, uh, and that's regarding to who, whom do I talk to regarding when people give things to the students. I'm talking in generally to about the Alumni Association. A couple of years ago, I was addressed by the students or by the coach in regards to would the alumni, <clears throat> and that is what we are about, is giving back to the student. Uh, would, be, would be we willing to give some monies for the baseball team to get new sweats? And I did. We did that. Joe Cassano and I wrote a check for the baseball team, and they bought, purchased them. Uh, and I also purchased, I wanted to think uniforms or something in effect to the cheerleading, the girls cheerleaders, and heard nothing from these people, nothing. Uh, and this past year, I was addressed regarding a couple of students that were uh, going to attend a, and I don't have their names here, I have it at home in my, and I just completely forgot about bringing that along. Um, they went for East High School to perform, I think it was track. I believe they went to district meet. And I heard, I gave each one a $25 check to take with them. I gave them cash, actually, to take with them when they went on the trip. And I heard nothing from that. And I gave McDonald coupons to both squads of basketball and football players for their season, just saying, good job. We appreciate as alumni everything that you boys do and hope to see you in the fall. And I went actually, <laughs> I probably shouldn't even say it, went through the AD and I've heard nothing from any of them. Ms. So Potts, that's, could, my, that's my speech. Could you check with Mr. Dahlstrand in the back mm -hmm. he, uh, when you're finished? He doesn't, if he doesn't have the answers to any of those concerns of yours, perhaps he can find out or relay okay. them to the building. Thanks. Okay, I will. It's in the back or in the rear. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. And for Mr. Anderson, that's called double dip. Double dip. Okay. Are there any other citizens who wish to speak to the board this evening? Any other citizens? Next item on the agenda is report of committees. Are there any? If not, there is also no unfinished business. We have the new business of the school district, and I would ask for an all-inclusive motion to approve the school district's new business, the school district's supplemental new business, and the school district's new business of the career and technical uh, school. May we have a motion to encompass all three of those entities? So moved. Moved by Ms. Shenley, seconded by Mr. Fabrizi. Any discussion or comment on any particular item included therein? If not, roll call on those three items, three outlined items. Ms. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. The next item of business is the approval of minutes for the August 13, 2014 meeting as attached electronically to the agenda. May we have a motion to approve them? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Shenley and seconded by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. The bills and payrolls, may we have a motion to approve them for payment as presented? So moved. Moved by Mr. Fabrizi, seconded by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Next, we have the report of the superintendent, and as I said, we have uh, in his stead this evening, 
Nancy Sedaly, our assistant superintendent. Ms. Sedaly. Thank you, Mr. Harkins. I'm pleased to report school opened without incident in all 18 of our Erie City School buildings. We now have a total of 12,308 students enrolled in the district. I want to offer recognition to Lisa Berlin and her staff for the efficient customer service offered to the parents and guardians. Between September 4th and August 4th, these um, ladies and gentlemen registered more than 900 students and did it with a smile. Preschool is now in operation in seven of our buildings. And again, thanks to Kim Olszewski and John Dahlstrand, who spearheaded this effort, along with the partnership of Mercyhurst University. Uh, finally, we had 59 retirements and 27 resignations at the end of 2014 school year, adding 75 new teachers in the district. All of those applying went through a rigorous screening process under the guidance of B. Habersky and her staff in HR. 176 candidates participated in writing prompts, 120 in first round interviews, and 92 in performance interviews. This was a more time consuming process, but we feel that it yielded the best possible candidates for our students uh, moving forward. But none of this process would have been possible without the hard work of the entire HR department. So there are many, many more unsung heroes whose cumulative efforts helped our school students have a successful start. I'm thinking of all the custodians, the secretaries, uh, the counselors. There are just numerous people, and I want them to know their efforts are appreciated. Is that the extent of the report, Ms. Sedili? Well, my only other comment was there was a wonderful article in about Piper Burley and our turnaround efforts, which was in the news on Sunday. And I already spoke with Erica and told her how pleased I was to see that and how well I thought she represented the turnaround efforts of Piper Burley. And Erica informed me that she'll be following up with that throughout the school year so the public's informed of the progress we make. So thank you, Erica, as well. And thank you, Ms. Sedaly. Any questions or comments to the superintendent, assistant superintendent? May we have a motion to accept and approve the report of the superintendent? So moved. Moved by Ms. Shenley and seconded by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The report of the secretary. May we have a motion to approve that? Moved by Mrs. Shenley, seconded by Mr. Spagel. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Shenley? Yes. Mr. Spagel? Yes. Mrs. Alexandrovich? Yes. Mr. Fabrizi? Yes. Mrs. McNair? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. There's no bids for us to consider for award this evening. Is there any other matter which any board member would wish to bring up at this time? Angela McNair? I just wanted to also give my condolences to Mrs. Drew with the passing of Mr. Drew, who was a great guy. And I also wanted to um, mention the great job um, Mrs. Ryan is doing over at Piper Burley. Um, the school is really doing very well. I'm over there all the time, and I think that her and her staff is doing a wonderful job over there with those students. And it's just been an amazing school year from what I see so far over at Piper Burley. So I just want to congratulate Mrs. Ryan in her efforts. Thank you, Angela. We join you in that. Any other matter which any other director wishes to bring up? Mr. Spiegel. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you, Tom. <laughs> September 30th, um, we will be holding the Grad Nation uh, town hall meeting. I'm, I'm actually on the steering committee for that, uh, me and Ina. And uh, what it is is trying to connect um, students and to make sure they have meaningful relationships with adults in order to increase graduation um, rates. So we are inviting the community at large to join us on September 30th here at East High School um, starting at 6 o'clock p.m. 
in order to gather um, ideas and um, information on how we can, along with Erie together, come up with um, solutions to increase our graduation rates in the high schools across the county. So thanks, Tom, for reminding me. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, prior to the meeting, Ms. Potts and I had a brief conversation and uh, we were discussing the uh, effort that began a few years back to rename the athletic field here at East High School, the football field, in honor of longtime coach and athletic director, Duke Detzel. And so, Ms. Sedaly, I'm asking if you would please uh, ask uh, Dr. Battams or if you yourself could uh, maybe check with Mr. Haft and see where things are with that and give us an update in the near future. And one other thing I would mention is Erie's Tom Lawless was recently appointed the interim uh, manager of the Houston Astros of Major League Baseball. He was a standout player at Strong Vincent under his uh, longtime coach, uh, longtime Erie coach Bob Brabender at Strong Vincent in the late 70s. He was put into a, a difficult situation. They've had a bad season, and I just happened to hear on the radio the other day, I may not have the whole story, but in order to avoid a losing season, they would have to have at least 63 wins out of their, I think, 162 game schedule. And there were bets in the community that they could not do it. And a furniture store said that if anybody had uh, a certain number of thousands of dollars worth of furniture on order, uh, the, it would be multiplied by $63,000. I'm stumbling to get this story, but this furniture store was betting that they wouldn't get it. And under their new interim manager, our Erie, native son Tom Lawless, they won. And so that furniture store is at least uh, in part because of that out $63,000. I wish I had a better explanation of the story than what I just gave you, but it's, it's cute. And the point is we're proud of our, our native son, uh, Tom Lawless, who uh, was put into a tough situation. He was a standout player at Strong Vincent and Barron College. So our congratulations and pride are with him. If there's no other matter that anyone else wishes to bring up at this time, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there such a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Shenley, seconded by Mr. Spiegel. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>